So there has been a, um, a discussion on that has been kind of been spread around Twitter, like on the 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 philosophy people on Twitter. Um, my Twitter is uh, my Twitter name is phenomenalogian. Um, so because of that name, I guess is the reason why people um, have. Um, basically tweeted me this issue um, and it's been like in May so it's been, taken me a while to come to this and make this video um, but uh, there's kind of been some discussion on Twitter like I said and on blogs like some of those links some of those tweets on Twitter have links to blogs where people have discussed and I've read a few of those so the kind of issue that I'm referring to is the issue is can phenomenology rescue religion from dogma? Um, I guess that's a reasonable question to, I guess, ask. And, um, I've done some thought about phenomenology of religion. Um, I've made a video about that a long time ago that has a good amount of views now. Like in 2011 I made a video about phenomenology and religion. Um, not referring to Heidegger's book about that, but just talking about phenomenology and, and how you can apply um, the thought of Edmund Husserl and Edmund Heidegger, Ed, Martin Heidegger, Edmund Husserl, Martin Heidegger, and those following him to the idea of religious belief. Um, that you know, there you, you can. Uh, there's also on the analytic side of things. There's a is a um, kind of a uh, talk about there's this kind of talk about religious epistemology and what that is is um, talking about as whether or not religious belief is rational or not um, and is it rational and reasonable to have a belief in a divine higher power um, that is omnipotent, omni omnibenevolent, um, omniscient, and um, uh, omni and omnipresent. Um, so, you know, like people who are atheists will say that people who are Christians don't have um, don't have adequate evidence to hold such beliefs. Um, I'm not one of those people, I'm kind of a I'm definitely a Christian, so I do have religious beliefs. So, and so I guess people to to read on that would be um, Alvin Plantinga. This is a book I've used a lot in my videos on this channel. Pretty beat up, as you can see. Um, um, but some people to read on that would be um, William James, W. K. Clifford. Those are some older ones. Um, as for um, now you can, like some, towards, some for some things towards now you can read people like Louis, Louis Poyman and William P. Alston, as well as William Plantinga, um, when we're t discussing the idea of religious epistemology. Um, and Alvin Plantinga makes the argument that one is rational um, in believing in God if his noetic structure or his system of beliefs um, affords for such a belief, if it affords for it, um, if it allows, you know, if you have beliefs that, if you have other beliefs in your system of beliefs that are standing in, in, a, in a correct relation, that makes a belief in a God rational or reasonable. Plantinga says that you, that, um, that, that belief in God is rational and is reasonable um, given certain certain qualifications. And I do have a full video about that, a, lo a nice, longer, detailed video about his article. Um, and planning his article is called Religious Belief Without Evidence. William P. Alston also has a similar, um, has a similar argument um, that um, he's mostly saying Though he isn't saying that religious belief is rational, he's mostly saying that um, 
religious belief isn't irrational and that within certain um, belief systems um, that that's rational and that there's the, there's the perceptual practice and then there's the Christian practice where there's different belief systems. I have a full flexibility about that too. But applying, talking about phenomenology with, with, with respect to religion, we have a different thing going on. Um, and basically what this whole issue is about is um, kind of combining phenomenology with theological discourse. Um, and as for what phenomenology is, I have a lot of videos about phenomenology itself, and I have a lot of videos about religion, and I have a lot of videos about just talking about the phenomenology of, of Edmund Husserl, Martin Heidegger, um, Jean-Paul Sartre, um, as well as a lot of other people and other different things, um, things having to do with phenomenology itself. Um, so if you want to kind of read about, read like the, the um, if you want to read about phenomenology of Husserl or Heidegger, you can read Being in Time by Heidegger, and you can read The Ideas by Husserl or Illogical Investigations or the Cartesian Medi Meditations, but Husserl has many, many other works that, you know, but if you want to read, like, like basic things about his phenomenological thought, things like The Ideas or The Logical Investigation, there are two writings by him which are very good for that. But the big question here is, can religion rescue, can phenomenology rescue religion from dogma? And I guess the whole thing here is that phenomenology, you know, I guess what I want to discuss a little bit here is what is called the phenomenological bracketing, or the epoche, or the epoche, or the parenthesizing, which, you know, basically, well, if, we're talking, if we're a realist or an idealist, what we're asking is... Um, if I see a certain thing, can I verify that it is really there, or if it's just a figment of my mind, or if it's just an idea that I've created? Um, can I verify the the existence of this cup or that person? Um, phenomenology is going to bracket the natural attitude, and the the natural attitude is to like things like realism or idealism, questioning whether or not um, uh, certain things are there if they're part of your ideas or whatever. Phenom a, a phenomenological standpoint will say that whatever you see is there because it's what you see. You're basically going to do science and do philosophy based upon what you see and what perception and experience is in itself. You're not going to go into any further questioning as to if what you experience is real or not. You're not going to try to go beyond your 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 experience. You're not going to you're not going to try to transcend your experience. You're gonna we're going to do philosophy and science with experience and perception as the starting as the start as the very starting point. Um, so that applies to religion in that if what we see and what we experience is the starting point to our, to our philosophy and our science. There are a lot of people who, people like myself, who claim to have experienced God himself or have had religious experiences, direct or indirect. Um, like that book, Heaven is for Real, that, that kid um, claims to have gone to heaven while he was in surgery. He claimed to have been hovering over his body and went to heaven for a little bit and sat on Jesus' lap. Um, and there are lots of out-of-body experiences and experiences going to heaven or hell. Um, um, a guy named Pastor Weiss claims to um, have been taking a nap when he basically went to hell um, in, his, in his mind, really, and that's... You know, a realist can just dismiss that as being false by saying, oh, he was dreaming it. Um, but I personally, I don't want to go into my personal experiences of God, but I have had personal experiences of God which 
for me, verify that God is real and that God exists and is active in my life. A realist or, or atheist, uh, whatever you want to call any, a basically a skeptic, um, would say that that's part of my mind and that I was just that's just part of my mind and that's not anything real. If you were going to talk about you know, one's religious experiences from a phenomenological standpoint, what you would say, you could, you could make the argument that what you experience is your starting point and you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna understand what is true and real based upon what you have experienced. And you could go take your science and your philosophy from there. Therefore, um, can phenomenology rescue religion from dogma? Dogma, what is meant by dogma is something that is believed in that has no, that, that no one has any evidence for. Um, and I think personally that if we do combine the, the, theological discourse with phenomenology, we can, in a way, I mean, it isn't like that if we do this that we're going to prove all atheists and skeptics wrong. That's, there's no way that's ever going to happen. But that could give the religious person a viable way of discussing his viewpoint and discussing his philosophy and his science. Um, because it can be argued that if you're if we're going from a from a phenomenological standpoint, if one has a religious if one has or has a religious experience, one instead talk about this from a phenomenological standpoint. Um, what you're going to try and do is not question as to whether that thing really happened or if that was really God, if that was just a dream or whatever. That happened and you're going to, and if you have a valid reason, you know, if you had some sort of error that you found out that this dream was an error of your mind that you were on drugs or, or you know, something like that, or if you're, or because of some health problem you were hallucinating something you know along the way cause you to call that into question then you can call that into question but if you have another reason no other reason to call that into call to call that into question um, then from your standpoint you can go from there and do that so I think that there is um, there is um, I think reason to try and apply phenomenology to, to theology and, ph and philosophy of religion. I think there is room for theological discourse combined with phenomenology itself and to talk about religion and religious experiences from a ph phenomenological standpoint. And I've done that a little bit, I've talked about that a little bit, but I kind of wanted to, re to revisit this issue. So let me know what your thoughts are if you think that someone who does experience who someone who does have a religious experience is still just a, a nutcase or whatever. Let me uh, let me know your thoughts, and I will. Well, I would love to just discuss this with you. Thank you.